Good day students. Well, so far in this video series, we've introduced you to the first five index laws. And what we're going to do now is move on to something that's slightly different. Now, an index tells you effectively if you're multiplying a number like four, um, five times, four times, four times, four times, four times, four. So four fives, sorry, five fours multiplied together. The five represents how many factors of four there are. But it's also possible to have indices that are not natural numbers. In other words, that aren't one, two, three, four, five, etc. And you'll be looking at more of these in year nine. So all we're going to do this year in this video series is look at four to the power of zero. So what I'd like you to do first is to have a think about that. And in your head, you don't need to write anything down. What do you think four to the power of zero actually equals? Okay, so have a think. You can stop the video if you want a bit of time. And then we'll go through what mathematicians say is the answer. Okay, let's see what we come up with. Let's see if you if your guess or your idea was correct. Now the secret to solving questions like this is everything that we do new in index laws, and for that matter in all of mathematics, should be compatible with everything we've already learned. In other words, you don't want to learn one thing on Monday and something else on Tuesday and find out that they contradict each other. So mathematics has to be consistent. So we're going to figure out what 4 to the 0 is by using what we already know about mathematics. So here I have the expression 4 squared. 4 squared over 4 squared, I should say. Now we're going to actually simplify this in two different ways. And whatever I get on the right-hand side, these two things must be equal because these two are equal. So the first way to think of this is any number, <coughs> excuse me, any number divided by itself equals 1. 6 over 6 equals 1, 9 over 9 equals 1, 1 over 1 equals 1. So 4 to the power of 2 divide 4 to the power of 2 equals 1. Now another way to think about this is to use index law number 2. To divide, to divide two powers with the same base, subtract indices. So that's 4 to the power of 2 minus 2, which is 4 to the power of 0. So because these two are equal, these two have to be equal. And based on that, 4 to the 0 power equals 1. Now, again, the reason we can say that is if we make it equal to any other number, it'll be inconsistent with what we already know about mathematics. Okay, I'm going to show you another way to justify it. When you're learning something new like this, it's always a good idea to uh, look at it a couple of different ways to, to convince yourself, basically, that what we're saying or what you're doing is correct. So, in the first question... Of the first statement, 4 to the power of 3 equals 4 times 4 times 4. That's 4 powers of 3. And of course, you can multiply 1 by any number and you get the same thing. So, 4 to the power of 3 can be written as 1 times 4 times 4 times 4. Now, using a similar idea, how would you write 4 to the power of 2? Well, that's going to be 1 times 4 times 4. So here I've got 3 factors of 4. Here I've got 2 factors of 4. What do you think's underneath the, the next box? Well, you probably guessed correctly that it's going to be 4 times 1. Or sorry, 1 times 4. And here's the kicker. This is what we're trying to get to. Using that pattern, what do you think 4 to the 0 is? Well, I need to write this with no zeros, with zero, sorry, no fours, with zero fours. And therefore, it must be true if this pattern is to hold that four to the zero equals one. So the answer to the question, what is four to the zero, 
is 4 to the 0 equals 1. And the reason for that is that's consistent with all the other mathematics that we've learned so far. So what is any number raised to the 0 power? Well, in that case, I'm going to write the letter A to stand for any number. What is any number raised to the 0 power? And the answer is 1. In other words, there's nothing special about 4. I could have done exactly the same argument there, putting a 5 in place of the 4, and it would have got 5 to the 0 equals 1. So any number raised to the 0 power is 1. So that's a nice easy rule, because it doesn't matter what the number is, we always get the same answer. Except there's one exception to this. So any number, or almost any number, raised to the 0 power is 1. And it turns out 0 to the 0 is one we have to look at in a bit more detail. And the reason is there's two different ways of thinking about it, both consistent with what we know about mathematics. So Josh says, well, I know that any number to the 0 power is 1. That's what we just uh, showed you on the previous pages. So therefore, 0 to the 0 must be equal to 1. But Sarah says, hold on a sec, Josh. 0 raised to any power is 0. So for example, 0 to the power of 3 is 0 times 0 times 0, which is equal to 0. So 0 raised to any power is 0. So 0 to the 0 equals 0. So here we have a contradiction. Josh is using what we just learned about raising numbers to the 0 power. Sarah is using uh, what she learned about um, the number 0. That if you multiply 0 times any number, you get 0. And they come up with different answers. So the question is, who's correct? Is Josh correct or is Sarah correct? OK, what do you think? Again, stop the video if you want to have a bit of a think. And which of those two arguments do you think is, is correct? And it turns out the answer is, in a way, they're both correct, which means neither one of them is correct. If you take out your scientific calculator and you type in 0 to the power of 0, um, at least on the brand that we use, you get math error. In other words, it can't be done. And the correct way of saying that using mathematical terminology is we say 0 to the 0 is undefined. So in other words, we can't use it. It doesn't equal any number whatsoever. 0 cannot be raised to the 0 power in mathematics. Now, if you get into some higher maths, and I'm talking past university level, sometimes in some areas, mathematicians find it useful to make that equal to 1. And in other areas, mathematicians find it useful to make it equal to 0. But in general, 0 to the 0 power is undefined. So if you ask that question on an exam, what is 0 to the 0? Just write undefined. And your calculator again says math error. OK, last index law for now is uh, number 6. A number raised to the 0 power equals 1, except 0 to the 0 is undefined. And write the example. For example, 235 to the 0 power equals 1. So copy that down. And let's go ahead and use this to solve some questions. OK, so any number except 0 raised to the 0 power equals 1. So these are actually quite easy. 5 to the 0, well, any number to the 0 power equals 1. 3 times 5 to the 0. Well, we know that 5 to the 0 equals 1. So 3 times 5 to the 0 equals 3. OK, I'll leave you to try the last two. So stop the video, have a go, and then restart it and see how you went. OK, welcome back, students. OK, now brackets means we do what's inside the brackets first. So 3 times 5 is 15. So that simplifies to 15 to the 0 power. And any number to the 0 power is 1. 
So the answer to that is 1. Okay, in red, that means it's a little bit more challenging. So let's see how you went on that one. Well, 5 to the 0 is equal to 1. So I can replace that with a 1. 4 to the 0 is 1. So I can replace that with a 1. This becomes 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 2 times 1, which is 2. And therefore, that simplifies to 5. Now, next year, you'll learn some additional index laws, again, using indices that aren't natural numbers, like negative numbers and fractions. But uh, that's the last of the rules for now. And in the next video, we're going to give you some more challenging questions to solve. So some problem solving in the next video. Okay, we'll see you over there very shortly.